Hello my lovelies, welcome back to my channel. For those of you guys that are new, welcome. My name is Pinky and teaching you witchcraft and tarot is what I do. For those of you guys returning, welcome back my lovelies. We are a bit behind, but here we are finally doing you guys' love readings. This is going to be for the middle of the month love reading for all zodiac signs. We're going to begin, of course, with cancer as it is cancer season. Uh, we're going to look into what's going on in your love life regarding new love and old flame. Uh, this is going to be for all the zodiac signs, like I said. If you guys are new to my channel, don't forget to like, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you guys can get notified of the most recent videos going up. We have tons of spell videos as well as uh, the continuation of the Tarot 101, as well as hundreds of new readings for you guys. Um, so you guys definitely stay tuned for that. If you guys are interested in any of the services that we provide, you can click the link below or the description box below. You'll be able to find all of our links on there. Anything to do with the manifestation uh, book, as well as the uh, journals, the journaling for manifestations for shadow work and all of that great stuff. You guys can also find our Amazon online store now that you guys can be able to purchase on there. Uh, a lot of the spell videos that are going to be going up, we have hundreds going up. I've been working, um, I've been working really hard re recording a lot of uh, spell videos. I know that we haven't been that proactive in spell work. Um, primarily, I do want to take the time to tell you guys primarily because I do get a lot of I do get a lot of feedback from you guys and I truly appreciate it, but I know that sometimes it's a bit difficult to get certain type of ingredients um, depending on what part of the world you're in. Uh, so I try the best I can to upload very simplistic spells that are going to help you, but I also have a lot of uh, intermediate or people that are very well knowledge in the, in the practice that are also requesting a bit of more elaborate type of spells, uh, a little bit more powerful spells. So we definitely have for everyone, we're going to be uploading uh, very easy and simplistic as I've tried to do it for all of you guys for quite a while since I started my channel. As of you guys that are more advanced, we definitely have more elaborate type of spell work going up. We're definitely working on all of those uh, videos, a lot of editing <laughs> behind the scenes, but you guys are definitely going to be seeing much more spell work going up here on my channel. So the Amazon uh, link that you guys can find in the description box below, it, you're able to go to my storefront and actually get a lot of the ingredients that we use in the spell work that it's going to be much more easy for you guys, more efficient. And as always, having you guys in mind, trying the best I can to give to you guys, um, make it more accessible. Uh, so without further ado, let's get into the reading. All right, I'm going to put it back in here. Like I said, we're going to begin here with Cancer. Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Here we go. Let's see what's going on with my lovely Cancer. Spirit guides, ancestors, and archangels, please step forward. Allow us to see clearly and concise. Allow me to open up as a vessel of communication. Let it be you who speaks through me. Use me as an instrument to be able to see, hear, sense, feel, and receive the messages for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance. Give me three cards to represent new love. Three cards to represent old flame. Three cards to represent new love. Three cards to represent old flame for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. How are you guys doing, Cancer? How are you guys dealing with this crazy-ass hot weather, you guys? I live in California, and uh, where I'm at is by the mountains. So it's uh, been ex over, over 100 degrees. Um, it's been a bit chaotic. <laughs> I hope you guys are in a much more cooler place. But anyways, let's get to the nitty-gritty here. Here we go. All right, for Cancer, new love, you have the Empress card here. You have the Six of Wands and the Two of Wands. Let me pull these back so you guys can see. All right, and this is regarding, let me put this a bit down. Give me one second, you guys, so you guys can better see the cards. All right, so we have the Empress here, the Six of Wands and the Two of Wands when we're speaking about your new love or the person that you're currently dealing with. How they see you, they're seeing you as everything they ever hoped for. Um, there is a lot of physical attraction in this connection, um, but they definitely see you as the Empress. And the Empress is always a very beautiful card because it speaks about... Uh, seeing the more gentle side of you, seeing the more feminine 
whether you're masculine or female doesn't matter they see your softer side uh, and they're definitely very lured because of that or very attracted to you because of that in regards to how they feel about you with the six of wands they definitely want you cancer they are willing to put in the work or they're willing to make the effort and actually win you over uh, six of wands is i will do whatever i have to do to attain cancer or to have them um see the better side of me and basically it's the pick me card right um because you are being you know almost kind of like the six of wands is almost like the warrior returning back and people celebrating that type of energy in regards to how they feel about you they see this in you with the empress you could be a bit popular or they may be very aware that you have options um or that you're very attractive but they are definitely willing to put in the work to make it work or to win you over in regards to future actions two of wands is definitely communication um so i see this progressively getting better for you guys for those of you guys that are dealing with someone right now um I feel like the month of July, even August, is going to be very exciting because there's a lot of passion, a lot of intensity here, um, and really looking to the future or wanting to build something in the future. So definitely positive, positive cards here for you Cancers. Now let's look at into the Old Flame. We have the Strength card, we have the Five of Wands, and the Seven of Swords. So there is definitely a feeling of they underestimated you cancer in some shape way or form strength card usually shows up in the position of how they feel about you there's definitely still passion there um but it's almost like they assume something about you perhaps felt very sure about you um they cannot explain the courage that you either started to vibrate to perhaps they felt like at some point, maybe they took you for granted because they assumed you would always be there. But with the strength card is finding the courage to um, continue on your path while they're seeing you or how they feel about you is they're feeling that you're prideful. Um, but there is an element of underestimating you. So in regards to you know why they feel that way about the, about the situation with the five of wands is you know competition um perhaps they felt very sure about you they felt like you would never go anywhere um and perhaps in hindsight they're now seeing that um they're now seeing that you're moving on or that you are moving on from what they assumed you would be uh, kind of still holding on to to this connection in regards to their future action seven of swords i see them looking at you from a distance i see them really trying to see what's going on in your life but i don't see them taking any type of action towards you i'm going to be honest i feel like their ego is hurt right now and it, it has more to do like i said they're speaking to me about an element of feeling like they underestimated you or they assumed um that you would be that you wouldn't move on or that it wouldn't be as easy for you to move on from them and it's i'm not saying that it's been easy for you cancer but that's their perspective like they didn't assume it would be that easy and now they're finding out that as time is progressing they're feeling like you do have options or like you are moving on or maybe you're even dating someone new and they were definitely not expecting that like i said i do see them uh looking at you from a distance so uh, sneaking fake profiles type of thing is the type of vibration that I am sensing that I am getting um, so don't be surprised if you have people that are unknown to you that are following you could be your ex <laughs> alrighty moving on now let's go to Leo let's see what's going on with Leo in regards to new love give me three cards to represent uh, Leo's new love and three cards to represent old flame for Leo Sun Moon Rising Venus Leo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Three cards for new love, three cards for old flame. All right, here we go. All right, Leo, so we have the King of Wands, the Four of Pentacles, and the Emperor card. Oof. All right, so when we're speaking about new love, 
Um, they are definitely seeing you as someone that is very strong tempered or perhaps um, a little bit intimidating, m vibrating more from a masculine energy. So they definitely see you more proactive. Um, there is an element here of unattainable. Um, so they could feel that you are a bit out of their league. Um, and this is something that may play a theme in this connection. When we're talking about possessiveness or when we're talking about jealousy. Uh, the reason I say that is because you do have the Four of Pentacles right at the center and the Emperor card. And this could represent if this connection is not built off of a solid foundation, um, it does have the potential to becoming a bit toxic with, like I said, obsessiveness, possession, um, or jealousy. And this is something that may um, affect this connection down the road. Now, in regards to how they feel about you with the Four of Pentacles, I don't see them being extremely open. Um, and this could possibly have a lot to do with the fact that they don't want to get hurt. Again, I feel like there is a feeling of superiority on your part. Um, I'm not saying that that's how you carry yourself, Leo, but I feel like that's how they see you almost unattainable or like you're out of their league type of energy. So they could be very reserved with their emotions, perhaps not opening up completely, kind of jumping in one foot in, one foot, in, one foot out type of thing. But the, the reality of it is because they are scared that they may take you seriously or that they may open up when they're not you're not necessarily easy to read or they're not even sure if you are committed to getting to know each other on a deeper level. Um, I'm going to be honest with you guys. If you guys have recently de are dealing with someone and the chemistry is awesome, da 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 yada, 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 I feel like you might want to test their, their jealousy because... And the reason I say this is because I feel like with the Four of Pentacles and the Emperor card, it could be a very over-obsessive type of energy, feeling a bit overburdened. Um, it's kind of like when they smother you type of energy, especially because it's built off of insecurity, the fact that they feel like you're out of their league, like, you know, you're the best thing that's happened to them. Um, and when I say tested, I mean in the aspect of, there is a difference between, you know, really caring for someone and, you know, experiencing a bit of jealousy here and there. But it's completely different when you start to notice that the person tries to uh, kind of remove you from the spotlight. They have an issue with you taking center stage. And then that's then that becomes an issue down the road. Why? Because they won't allow you to shine your true light. They're always going to feel deep down inside that there is an underlying uh, sense of competition between you and them. And that could be very problematic when we're talking about relationships, okay? All right, now we are going to look into the old flame here for Leo. We have the Page of Pentacles, the Seven of Wands, and the Moon card. So there is almost this, in regards to how they're feeling about you, they feel like you're still something that they haven't completely moved on from. But there is a lot of uncertainty here. With the Seven of Wands, I feel like they're guarded or they're protecting themselves. So if you are dealing with an ex-partner or a person from your past, but you don't really know where you guys are at right now, or they're not really telling you like, yes, I want to work it out. I want to go back with each other. Let's fix it. Let's make it work. If they're not doing that, be careful, Leo, because I feel like they may be stringing you along only because they don't want to completely lose you because they know the value in you and in who you are. But they're also not being completely honest because they know that if they're being honest and they tell you, I don't think I'm ready or I'm not really wanting to jump into the relationship again, they know that you're going to completely walk away or you're going to pull back and they don't want that. So again, be careful if you are dealing with an ex-partner or someone from your past that you recently broke up with, that they're not, you know, they're texting you here and there, they're still communicating, but they're not necessarily telling you like, let's work it out. I feel like they themselves 
are not really looking to go back into the relationship. They just don't want to lose you, if that makes sense. So be careful with that, Leo. All right, moving on. Let's see what's going on here with Virgos, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. If you guys like these videos, definitely like, share, and comment. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards to represent their new love, three cards to represent Old Flame, Virgo, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Virgo, new love. We have the double card. We have the Empress, and we have the Six of Wands. Wow, powerful energy. For some of you Virgos, you may be dealing with a Saturn ruled sign. Could be a Capricorn, could be an Aquarius. Um, with the Devil and the Empress, I'm I'm going to be very straightforward. If you are dealing with someone, or somehow in this time frame, from now all the way to I want to say the beginning of August, you start dealing with someone that they become very hot and heavy. It's like an immediate chemistry immediate physical attraction the passion the intensity is very high um that's good but keep in mind that usually what burns quickly crashes and burns you know what i mean like what starts off very high and you know hot and heavy usually crashes and burns why do i say that the devil card with the empress is giving me obsessive type of energy based on physical connection or based off of the beauty that they gravitate towards you or that you gravitate towards them. Six of Wands is a very ego, prideful type of energy. So you put the devil, the empress, and the Six of Wands. It is being proud or getting to the point of even loving to show off, but it's primarily because of they were able to so what i'm saying is if you don't have a problem but with being treated like a trophy then i guess this is good for you but if you have an issue with you know people mostly you know trying to show the world that they attained you and it's something that bothers you um i would be careful with this again with the devil and the empress it's it's obsessive type of energy and it's obsessive because of the physical connection or attraction so slow and steady wins the race is what they're saying here virgo slow and steady okay um when i usually see the devil and the empress it's a chemistry that you just cannot contain or you just can't hold back um but with the six of wands i really do want to mention that don't let or don't allow um, your ego and pride to rule over this connection or your relationship. Um, so as an example, if the person that you start to deal with, and I'm going to be honest, uh, Virgo, the devil and the empress is very, very like, uh, heightened sexual energy. So it's a person that's very charismatic. It's a person that is very, uh, could be potentially very physically attractive, um, and it's almost as, as it's almost as if they use that uh, to get what they want. So again, just keep that in mind if you are dealing with a person that starts to, or that you're very aware uh, that is very that seems to be very secure of themselves and very confident, um, because that's exactly what might charm you. But at the same time, that may be a trigger point for you at some point in this connection so it's almost like the energy of kind of what attracted you to them is usually what's going to lead you to be turned off by them um so just be careful with that virgo all right let's see virgo's old flame here we have the page of wands seven of cups and the six of pentacles so when we're talking about how they feel about you page of wands um doesn't carry necessarily a very high you know vibration of emotions it's primarily more to do with passion or with desire or with the desire of wanting to reach out um so you may still be in contact or you may hear from them here and there um in regards to why they feel this way with the seven of cups they're not consistent and the reason they're not consistent is because they have options or they're entertaining other options 
in regards to future action, six of pentacles would indicate uh, that there is a possibility of kind of meeting each other, you know, meeting um, or them meeting you halfway. But with the seven of pent, I uh, sorry, with the seven of cups next to it, it does indicate the expectancy of something. So again, if your ex all of a sudden starts to hit you up, hey, uh, Virgo, I've been having a very hard time, or I've been having a very difficult time, and they kind of start off with that, just know that more than likely they're going to end up asking you for some type of favor. For some of you guys, it could be monetary favors. Uh, so again, don't let them don't let them string you along and don't allow them to uh, continue to feel like they have the right to to the same connection or to the same benefits as they did when they were with you because obviously they're not with you anymore do you see what i'm saying so no favors virgo especially from exes right now all right moving on Let's see what's going on here with Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of July 2023. Virgo, I'm sorry, Libra. <laughs> Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards to represent Libra, new love, as well as three cards to represent their old flame. Libra, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go, Libra. We're starting off here with the Eight of Swords the temperance and the page of pentacles so when we're talking about how they see you at the eight of swords i feel like they are either aware that you haven't completely moved on from a situation or a person if you recently started dealing with someone and all of a sudden you feel like it kind of grew cold or they're not really communicating they're not really messaging you um there was something if you backtrack there was something to do with Perhaps you kept repeating or speaking about an ex or talking about what you experienced in your last relationship. That was a complete or major turnoff for them. With the temperance and, you know, how they feel, temperance is the the, the energy of like, um, still kind of like, it's not that strong, the feeling or the desire is not that strong to, uh, basically continue putting effort with the temperance it indicates to me like still trying to figure out exactly where you guys are at um but it also does speak about timing so i feel like the timing between you and this person that you recently were dealing with was probably off and they probably picked up on that or they probably picked up on the fact that you're not ready or haven't completely moved on from the person from the past in future actions, I don't see any movement. Page of Pentacles does indicate some type of communication, but I feel greatly that for this month, there's not going to be much communication. Uh, page of Pentacles, out of all the pages, the Pentacles is always the one that takes the longest. So I feel like I don't see any communication coming about, at least not in this month. Um, yeah, my advice is just keep it moving. Uh, honestly, Libra, because I feel like you may be wasting your time in this connection. All right. And now let's see Old Flame. We have the Ace of Swords, Six of Swords, and the Justice card. Wow. All right, Libra. So when we're talking about the person from your past, how they feel about you, Ace of Swords, there's definitely a desire and a want to communicate or to reach out to you. Uh, why they feel this way they feel like there was a situation that perhaps either pulled you guys apart or the relationship or the connection came to an end because someone was walking away from this connection however it was whatever your situation was there's still a desire to reach out to you um it's almost like they haven't completely healed even though they have tried to move on i do see them kind of trying to revisit the past or trying to reach out and communicate with you in regards to future actions the justice card obviously does represent your energy libra so i do feel highly like they will be communicating with you sometime by this month or the end of this month um and i feel i'm gonna be honest with the ace of swords and the justice card i feel like your story or your connection is hasn't made its conclusion it, there's something that's still pending here in this connection why because right at the center we have the six of swords and the six of swords is moving on to calmer waters 
However, you did see more than two people in this boat, in this card. So it is indicating to me if there was a situation where third party was involved or other people outside of your relationship were affecting the relationship, whatever grew you guys apart is exactly what's going to bring you guys back together. Why? Because the justice card is here. So if you felt like there was, you were treated unfairly or unjustly in this situation, it's almost a revisiting of it and what was, you know, what they tried to do or how they tried to affect the relationship is basically what's going to be bringing you closer to that connection or that relationship again. So I feel like you guys are not completely done in this situation. All right, moving on, we're going to go to Scorpio. Let's see what's going on with Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Give me three cards to represent new love, three cards to represent old flame. For Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. For the month of July, 2023. Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Three cards for new love. Three cards for old flame. All right, here we go, Scorpio. We're starting off here with the Nine of Cups, the Death card, and the Page of Swords. Okay, very interesting energy here. Right at the center, we do have Scorpio energy. Uh, the death card does represent um, the ending cycle of something. So when we're talking about your new love, how they see you, Nine of Cups is wish fulfillment or seeing in you everything they wished once upon a time that they were looking for in a partner. So it's almost like a wish being fulfilled for them. How they feel about you with the death card, there is something that's going to be transforming this connection with the nine of cups and the death card i feel like i'm gonna be honest scorpio if you recently felt or recently noticed that you and your partner kind of have been either drifting apart or like they're very cold and distant they are and the reason for that is because i feel like they had you in a very very high pedestal there was something that was very unrealistic how they viewed you or how they seen you um, and something recently changed that. There is something that recently happened that transformed the way they view you or that transform and almost has them internalizing what is it that they really feel about you. Um, because with the Nine of Cups and the Death card, it's like all your wishes being fulfilled or feeling emotionally fulfilled. And then there is some type of, some type of circumstance that happens that it completely transforms or changes the way you view that person um and with the page of swords here as in future actions i do see communication but i feel like the communication is going to be very straightforward for some of you guys it could be that they text you um the moment you tell them hey i feel like you're drifting apart or like you're not very proactive in communicating with me they may just like, don't be surprised if they text you like, you know what, I can't deal with the relationship right now in my life. Or, you know what, I just can't make it work right now. I feel very strongly like with the Page of Swords, it's a message that comes through and that it's, it may be a bit painful with the death card. But I feel like in the grander scale of things, they're kind of doing you a favor because you also don't necessarily want to be with someone that has you in such a high pedestal. Um, because there's a lot of unrealistic expectations to that. And I feel like for some of you guys, I'm also getting the energy. If you were dealing with someone online, um, and you guys started getting to know each other, or you guys started to invest more time in each other, I feel like you guys were very wrapped up into the fantasy of it. And there is going to be something situation or cir circumstance can, that's going to force you to come crashing down and to realize that it was more so a fantasy than a reality of things. So if you are dealing with someone that you met online, they're giving you the runaround about meeting or actually putting effort into coming and see you. Don't waste your time there, Scorpio, because I feel like there's a lot of unrealistic expectations in this situation with the page of swords they will not hesitate to cut you out of their life. Um, so it, it's almost like there's a fickleness to this type of energy. Be careful with that. All right. Now, in regards to your old flame here, we have the four of cups, the king of cups, and the three of cups. 
So how they feel about you, Scorpio, with the Four of Pentacles. I feel like you guys are very disconnected at this point. Um, why they feel this way, King of Cups, they could have potentially felt like they were more emotionally invested in this relationship than you were. Or it could have been that their requirements or expectations of how they wanted you to carry yourself in this relationship um, was kind of delusional. So it's giving me the energy of the person that wants you to be completely loyal to them. But in turn, when you tell them that you don't appreciate them being flirts, they automatically just tell you, well, that's how I am. Why are you trying to change me? Why are you trying to change this part about myself? And it's not that. It's just a cop out, basically. Um, so it's the, the person that wants, right, for you to act like wifey material or act like husband material, but they're not willing to reciprocate that same type of energy. So don't waste your time with this person. I don't see them communicating. If anything, I feel like you may be a bit in your feelings this month because you may find out that they're either dealing with other people or that they are being more social and more proactive, uh, dating the you know, dating other people or going out or being more social. Um, if you are waiting to hear from them or waiting for them to communicate with you, I would just keep it pushing, honestly, Scorpio, because I feel like you're just wasting your time. You're dealing with the person that makes a lot of promises, but doesn't necessarily deliver. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go on to <clears throat> Sagittarius. Let's see what's going on with Sagittarius. Sun, Moon, Rising. Sun, Moon, Rising. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Give me three cards to represent their new love. Three cards to represent Old Flame. Sagittarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with my lovely Saggies. All right, here we go. All right, you have the Seven of Wands, the World card, and the Strength card. So in regards to how they see you, Seven of Wands is definitely the desire of wanting to back up. So for some of you guys, it could have been a situation where things were going or you thought that they were progressively going well. All of a sudden, they're pulling back, they're cold, they're distant. Why are they feeling this way? The World card is they've been thinking or they've been highly thinking um really internalizing this relationship or this connection and with the world card there is almost like an elevation um an elevation or some type of higher awareness on their part but i feel like with the seven of wands they are realizing that there are certain aspects or certain parts of you that they cannot change or vice versa this could be you feeling this way about them and being more reserved about it or being the one to say, okay, do I have to make the decision of completely walking away from this connection because we kind of bring out the worst in each other with the world card and the strength card? It's realizing that, you know, sometimes we cannot change people no matter how hard we try, no matter how much we try to love them in the most real way. If a person is not built, if their way of loving is not your way of loving, and they're not willing to learn your way of living, then you're never going to be able to fulfill them in that aspect. Then they're never going to be able to love you the way you deserve to be loved, Sagittarius. So there is almost this realization that's happening right now um, in regards to in regards to this relationship. Future actions with the strength card. I don't see them taking any further action in this connection with the world card. It speaks to me like for some of you, you could be almost in the moment or pivotal moment in your life where you're deciding um, how to move forward. And for some of you guys, it's finding the courage and the strength to walk away from this that you've outgrown already. And as a new love reading I feel like for some of you guys, you've been through so much that you're able to pick up on people being authentic or not, and you no longer holding on longer than you should to try to give them the benefit of the doubt. I feel like you're more confident and you know exactly what it is that you're looking for in a partnership. And if they're not willing to step up, you're not willing to give them your time anymore. You're not willing basically to sacrifice yourself no more. 
And that is very empowering energy here, Sagittarius. Now, in regards to Old Flame, we have the Four of Wands, the Knight of Swords, and the Queen of Wands. So, in regards to how they feel about you, with the Four of Wands, there was, uh, for some of you guys, you could have been living together. For others of you, it could have been like a long, committed relationship. With the Knight of Swords, there was almost this feeling of having the need to protect yourself or having the need it's almost like a defense mechanism and i'm gonna tell you guys what came to mind immediately was like survival so i feel like for some of you guys it could have been a very long-term relationship but with everything you've experienced this puts you on survival mode and i feel like now you're becoming more empowered you're becoming more stronger um and there is a desire to cut ties from anything that is toxic in your life. With the Queen of Wands here in regards to their future actions, I don't see them taking action towards you. If anything, I feel like you become much more confident or you have the tenacity and the courage to actually put yourself out there. Especially those of you guys that have gone through some type of separation or some type of divorce. Maybe you haven't been dating for quite a while. I see that quickly is going to be changing for you guys. Um, you're going into the cycle of protecting yourself out of need and necessity and no longer in that process, no longer allowing people to step or walk all over you guys. And that is beautiful to see. So when we're talking about old love, um, I feel like this person really, for some of you guys, could have really taken advantage of you, whether it was monetarily, whether it was emotionally, whether they were abusive for some. Um, but what they are saying here is, yeah, they will be communicating or trying to come back into your life, but it's also out of I don't want to say necessity again, but that's what's coming to mind out of necessity. Um, it could be that as an example, if if you were living with your partner and there was a breakup or a separation, the reason why they come back around is not necessarily because they want to work it out. It has more to do with it's more convenient for them because they were living with you as an example or they realize that they don't have it that easy out there on the street than being at home with you. There is something about comfortability, and that's the reason they may come back around. I don't see communication happening this month, however, but I do see them not willing to let you go just yet. But I feel like it has more to do with what you're able to provide for them. So my Sagis, wake up, wake the fuck up. Don't allow people to be taking advantage of you. All right. Now, let's go to Capricorn. Let's see what's going on for Capricorn. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus for the month of July 2023. Give me three cards to represent their new love. Three cards to represent the old flame. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Capricorn, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Capricorn, you have the Devil card, the Hermit. And the full card. Wow, you have three major, three major arcanas. Interesting. Saturn is definitely playing a very important role in your life right now. For some of you guys, I would highly encourage you guys to look at your birth chart. Um, the reason I say that is because they are speaking about Saturn's energy with the hermit, higher spiritual. Um, almost becoming self-aware of what it is exactly that you're looking for in a partner. Um, for others of you, you're going into this new cycle in your life where new love is bound to come into your life. And this could be almost like the beginning of something that is going to be long lasting. The reason I say that is because the devil is right next to the hermit. Um, so I also know that the north and south node are changing. So for some of you guys, depending on where you have that in your chart, it's going to greatly impact you in the aspect of you're basically being guided or you're being you're being guided and spiritually, I should say, you're being spiritually guided towards the partner that is meant for you. Um, you guys may be dealing with a Virgo. 
For others of you, you may be dealing with an Aries or you may be dealing with an Aquarius. What I'm seeing here is there is someone, Capricorn, that is extremely obsessed with you right now. Um, if you guys are currently dealing with someone, I feel like this person, like you're not aware of this person, this person that they're showing me right now. There is someone that is watching you. There is someone that's definitely been fantasi fantasizing about you or that is really desiring, wanting to like actively pursue you. Um, but with the hermit, I feel like there is almost, there is this feeling of honesty, purity. For some of you guys, this could be a friend um, that is in your energy. And it's almost like they're seeing you in a very different way. In a very physical way. Um, with the full card, it, there's hesitation there because... I don't want to, you know, confess to Capricorn. I don't want to open up to Capricorn and then make, make me look like a dumbass if they're not really interested or if they're not feeling me. So there is definitely a question there whether you're interested in them or not. Um, but I feel like they haven't revealed yet their true intentions for you. And for some of you guys, they are showing me like some innocence or purity to it. That could be bound to some type of friendship. Um, now for others of you, this could represent the person that you're actually dealing with right now. Um, and in regards to how they see you, the devil card is they definitely see you very authoritative. They see you a bit dominant, um, how they feel about you with the hermit. I feel like they're still genuinely trying to get to know you, Capricorn. Give them a chance, Cappy. Give them a chance. I'm gonna tell you why. Capricorns, you guys have a tendency of like making it so difficult for people to get close enough to you. Like you'll allow them close enough, but like with your arm out <laughs> to a certain distance. And the reason for it is because obviously it's your defense mechanism trying to protect yourself, yada, yada, yada. But in this aspect of doing that, what you're doing is you're not really allowing people to get to know the real you Capricorn. And there is a lot of beauty to you. There is a lot of beautiful qualities of you your loyalty is one of the loyalties that is almost unmatched almost like leo um your desire when when you genuinely care and love for someone you provide for them and i'm not just speaking about monetary wise i'm speaking about like you make sure that their needs are being met um there is a lot of beautiful qualities to you but i feel like you really be testing people you know and then you wonder why they kind of give up. It's like, well, no one likes to be playing the guessing game. And you're very good at that, Capricorn. So if you are dealing with someone in your life right now where you feel like they are being genuine and they are being authentic, open a little bit up to them. Uh, be more in your child-like type of energy. Because I know Capricorns are not known for being spontaneous. And Capricorns are definitely not known for taking chances. But when you are truly inspired, Capricorn, you feel like you could take on the world. And that childfulness type of energy comes out in you. Um, so again, really tap into that energy because I feel like it's going to be very beneficial for you in the long run. All right, my lovelies. Now let's look into your past lover. We have the Judgment, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Two of Cups. Wow. Okay. Give me a minute while I sip my Starbucks coffee. <laughs> Because it's been a very long day, you guys. Okay. So with the judgment card here, how they feel about you. They feel like you judge them. Obviously, they feel like there was something that had to do with people, family. A lot of people having a lot to say about this relationship. But in regards to why they feel this way with the Wheel of Fortune, it's almost like taking self-responsibility for the shit that they did and owning up to it. And with the Wheel of Fortune, it's like them trying to, you know what I'm getting, Capricorn? I'm getting almost like the energy of when you have something really good in your life, I feel like you help them out a lot. You help them grow in some shape, way, or form. And they realize that they don't have that with anyone else anymore. So there is a regret 
a remorse and there is a almost revisiting the situation with the wheel of fortune here and the two of cups so if you capricorns out there are hoping for some type of reconciliation i definitely do see that and i actually see it happening much more quicker than you expect i feel like for some of you guys this is going to be playing out for you guys this month um where they're taking ownership they're taking self-responsibility and they're wanting or asking or even begging for some of you guys to give them a second chance uh, with the Two of Cups, I feel like they're being very authentic and honest or genuine in their intentions. Uh, there is genuine remorse here. So the ball is in your court, Capricorn. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Aquarius. Let's see what's going on with Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. In regards to love and romance, give me three cards to represent new love. Three cards to represent Old Flame. Aquarius, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Aquarius, we're starting off with the Nine of Wands, the Star card, and the Emperor card. All right, so how they're seeing you. With the Nine of Wands, there is some type of oversharing. If you recently started dealing with someone, try the best you can not to wear your heart on your sleeve, Aquarius. The reason I say this is because the Nine of Wands, in regards to how they see you, they see you as damaged goods. They see you as a person that has really gone through it. And though sometimes this could be a good thing, I feel like you don't want to completely reveal your whole story. You want to keep it a bit of a mystery so that they can still be putting the same effort and the same enthusiastic type of energy and getting to know you. you you get what i'm saying if you tell them where you've been what you've gone through and everything like just open your book up and tell them exactly everything you've been through there's no mystery to that and then there's a feeling of i already know you're very predictable type of energy you don't want that is what they're saying um in regards to how they feel about you the star card they are definitely hoping to stabilize this connection or this relationship with you with the emperor card right next to it so there is um now if you're dealing with someone aquarius that has came to you with the heart on their sleeve telling you everything they've been through telling you even embarrassing things about themselves or about the person that they dealt with in the past etc know without a doubt that they're being completely brutally honest with you because this person has gone through it and they're just not up for games anymore and i feel like you on the other hand if it's them revealing all of this to you i feel like you guys are going to connect on a deeper level and it does have the potential for something long lasting with the star card and the emperor card here um but if it is you that you catch yourself, oh, maybe I've been expressing a little too much. Maybe I've been talking a little bit too much about myself. Bring it back about them. You know what I mean? Allow them to talk about themselves. Um, this is something that, believe it or not, does affect how people perceive you, uh, especially when you're first getting to know someone. This is something I tell my, you know, my clients often. You kind of have to let them, you know, this is going to sound weird, but people love talking about themselves. They really do. And the less you talk, the more mysterious you are, the more they're craving or desiring to get to know you more. And if you allow them to talk about themselves, they will feel like they're talking to themselves, therefore making them feel very comfortable. And in the very comfortable, they will feel like they're genuinely connecting with you, even though they're kind of connecting with themselves, if that makes sense. Um, so just be cautious about that. Be aware of that, basically. All right, Aquarius, in regards to your past lover, we have the Two of Pentacles. We have the Seven of Pentacles and the Empress card here. In how they feel about you, Two of Pentacles, they are still figuring themselves out. I'm going to be honest. I feel like this person from your past was either carrying a lot of baggage from the past um, that didn't really get to connect with you on an emotional level two of cups tells me that there is a lot of imbalance when it comes to their emotional state uh this is the type of person that perhaps runs away from commitment or has issues with commitment 
Seven of Pentacles is a habit. It is something that they've done multiple times or maybe you are seriously or you seriously, you know, were dealing with someone that was a commitment phobe. Um, in regards to the future actions with the Empress, Empress is female energy. Female energy is passive. I don't see communication happening, though they may miss you and they may think of you. I feel like it's only passive or temporary or in certain occasions, but the need to reach out to you is not strong enough to actually make them reach out. So I don't see any type of communication. I do see them reminiscing about the past, um, but again, gives me the vibes of like a commitment phobe. So take it as a blessing that you ducked that bullet. All right, Aquarius. Now let's go on to Pisces. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. Give me three cards to represent you love for Pisces. Three cards to represent Old Flame, Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. In regards to love and romance. Let's see what's going on with Pisces, Sun, Moon, Raising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Pisces. We have the Eight of Swords. We have the Knight of Wands and we have the Lover's card. Okay, so in regards to your new love, I'm going to keep it 100 with you, Pisces. I feel like, I feel like this connection sped up a little too quickly. Uh, for some of you guys, it could have been very hot and heavy type of energy where now you feel like you've hit a roadblock or like you guys, can we move on from this type of energy? With the Eight of Swords in regards to how they see you, they see you as a person that likes to be either domineering or a person that has a lot of insecurity issues. And there is almost this energy of being tied to the past or not completely freeing yourself from the past. So it could be that they are either aware that you have a tendency of like still communicating with the next partner or they've caught you maybe for some. Uh, for others of you, it could just represent that they are aware you haven't moved on. And I'm going to be honest, with the Eight of Swords and the Knight of Wands, it's almost like the energy of, as an example, when you're in your feelings, um, you become very aggressive, very passive aggressive. And you can make comments about like an ex-partner or how they treated you versus how he or she's treating you right now. That's very passive aggressive type of energy. And I feel like at this point, they're realizing that either you're very impulsive or they themselves may be impulsive. And if you are dealing with a person like this, my advice is walk away from this because this could become very toxic very quickly. Um, Eight of Swords, Knight of Wands, not being able to control your emotions or them not being able to control their emotions. It becomes, it has the potential of becoming something very physical with the lover's card, very like intensity and passion um, that it could get physical, you know, and someone might end up going to jail type of energy. So advice, if you are dealing with this type of energy, my advice is walk away from this because before it becomes much more toxic um, for others of you, it's just the desire on their part to, or I should say on their part, it's the realization that you haven't completely moved on from someone from the past and they are making the decision of protecting themselves by walking away from this connection. So if as an example, there is a recent separation or some type of breakup and you don't understand why, but there was an ex around you or surrounding you or they became aware of it. That's the reason. I feel like they're trying to protect themselves and trying to get themselves out of like something that could get potentially messy. All right. Now, in regards to your old flame, we have the Knight of Pentacles, the Ten of Swords and the Sun card. So in how they feel about you with the Knight of Pentacles, they definitely do see your worth, Pisces. Um, it's almost like missing or thinking of you from a distance, but realizing that this has finally came to a conclusion. With the Ten of Swords, um, it could have been a very difficult um, conclusion. It could have been very painful, uh, especially for those of you, Pisces, that walked away from this person. Like, it wasn't them. It was more so to do with you walking away. Um, 
with the sun card though it's almost the realization that yeah pisces is better off uh or i des or pisces deserve to be treated better than the way they treated you so there's some type of actualization and realization here but i feel like in regards to people from the past it's time to flip the script or it's time to change the chapter uh stop looking towards the past you are better off um uh, pisces um you're better off choosing yourself at this point. Um, and again, I feel like if they're not aware of that right now, they will become aware of it sometime this month where if there is communi... I don't see quick communication. However, I do see the possibility of communication. And I feel like at some point, they will be reaching out telling you, you were too good for me or you deserved for me to treat you better or et cetera, et cetera. When that happens, Pisces, don't take it as a sign that maybe we're meant to be. No, take it as a sign that they are trying to honor you for how good you love them and giving you the conclusion that you need so that you can move on. Okay. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Aries. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Aries. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Three cards to represent new love. Three cards to represent old flame. Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. If you guys do like these videos, like, share. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. All right, here we go, Aries. Let's see what's going on with you. In regards to new love, you have the Emperor card, the Two of Wands, and the Nine of Wands. Okay, so what they're showing me here is when it comes to how they're seeing you right now, the Emperor is a very powerful card, Aries, obviously, because it represents your energy. So they say they see you very much in your energy. They see you strong. They see you beautiful or gorgeous or attractive. Um, there is a lot of desire of wanting to get to know you, to get closer to you. How they feel about you with the two of wands, they definitely think of you when you're not around. Um, there, There is a desire, as you can see, the two of wands is looking towards this emperor. There's a desire of stabilizing this connection. Uh, future actions with the nine of wands. I feel that though this has the potential for something to become something more solid, with the nine of wands in regards to their future actions, I feel like they're going to feel at some point either intimidated by you, Aries, or they're going to feel like it's too much work. Um, and I am going to tell you, try the best you can to keep your aggressiveness on check. And the reason I say that is not in a negative way, Aries, but by the way, I personally love Aries. I just adore you guys. I have many friends that are Aries in my life. I've dated many Aries. <laughs> one of the few that can keep up with me. <laughs> and you guys are amazing. But one thing you guys do have is that you guys are extremely confident. And that is a beautiful thing for people that are able to almost, what's the word I'm looking for? That is very attractive to people that are confident themselves because they see it as a virtue. But people that are not necessarily that confident or that have been hurt in the past and they're dealing with someone that is confident and you believe in yourself and you're strong and you're empowered, they may see it as Aries doesn't need me and their fears start to kick in and then they become much more insecure. I hope I'm making sense. I feel like what they're drawn about you may also be what kind of scares them and they start to pull away. It's almost this energy of like being very attracted to you. They really are wanting to stabilize this connection, but they themselves have insecurity issues. So I feel like what draws them to you or what attracts them to you may potentially become something that they're going to struggle in this connection. Um, so my advice is if you're really interested in them, Aries, try the best you can to be reassuring and try the best you can to be humble. Um, I know that sometimes, like I said, some people gravitate more towards other people and, you know, 
Aries, you know, like Scorpio, like Capricorns have a tendency of like people telling them that you guys could be intimidating and only the strong survive, right? <laughs> but sometimes you could be dealing with someone that is extremely sweet and is extremely good for you. And because you're so much in your masculine energy, even if you're a female, you're so much in your masculine energy, it doesn't mean that you can't tap into the feminine energy. It just means that you've dealt with nothing but female energy, that when you finally meet or deal with someone that is in their in their masculine energy, it's really hard for you to like step down and be like, okay, I'm going to stay in my feminine energy. You know what I'm saying? I hope I'm making sense. Let me try to rephrase it in a different way. A lot of the times men have, as an example, men have this misconception of alpha females or females that are extremely dominant extremely in their masculine energy right and they make comments like oh i would never be able to date you know a female that is very masculine or that is very dominant um because i'm the dominant one what by them saying that is admitting that they're not in their masculine energy because a masculine energy right which is the proactive energy feminine is passive uh masculine is very active so if they are masculine they don't have the need to remind people that they're masculine and a true masculine loves to deal with the female as an example that carries masculine energy why because they're self-sufficient right but the moment that they start to act masculine around that masculine female, she will naturally go in her state, which is her natural state, feminine energy. It's just that they have this misconception. Why? Because a lot of females that become alpha females or that become masculine females is out of survival. So that could mean multiple things. It could mean that they've never dealt with the masculine and all they've dated is female energy, even if they're guys. It's female energy and they've become the provider. They've become the one that goes out and faces the world. They're the ones that provide. They're the ones that make the money. They're the ones that take care of their man, right? But it doesn't mean that that's their natural state of being. So when you deal with the female that has a lot of masculine energy, know without a doubt that it's because of survival. Whether they've, whatever they've experienced, whatever they've gone through, they've never dealt with a true masculine energy. Because the moment they do, they will naturally regress into their natural state of being. I hope that makes sense. So that's the energy I'm sensing. So if you're a female and you're very much in the masculine energy, try the best you can to keep that in check sometimes because... You can throw off people or not necessarily intimidate them, but you can come off across as cocky or even condescending. And that could be, you know, something that pushes people away. You know, I hope that makes sense. All right. Now let's look into your past. Wow. All right, Aries. In regards to your past, we have the star card here. In regards to how they feel about you, they are still... I'm going to be honest, Aries, if you've been thinking about your partner nonstop or you've been thinking about them out of nowhere in the past couple of days or whatnot, I would highly advise you to say a prayer and to say, I call my energy back from all space, places, and people that my energy doesn't belong to. I call my power back. I take it back. The reason I'm telling you this is because with the star card and the magician and the hermit, they're trying their hardest to manifest you. And manifesting could be a multitude of things. It could be just literal manifestation or uh, they may resort to spell work. Uh, with the star card and the magician here, in regards to how they feel about you, they are still seeing you as a star. They're still seeing you as the person that I want the person that I need, um, why they feel this way with the magician, they you showed them a different way of seeing things or you showed them a different type of life 
or to see life in a very different way and heavily activated their spiritual sense or their spiritual desire um, with the hermit card here. For some of you guys, you could have potentially been dating someone that was extremely very connected to their ego, uh, which is the root chakra, which is like when we're ruled by not emotions or spirituality, but more so our flesh, our needs type of thing. And the moment you walked out of their life or the moment that you were no longer as attainable to them, they realized your worth. They realized how much of an impact you did in their life in a positive way with the hermit. It's like praying and hoping to have another go at it, to have another opportunity. I would definitely be, uh, be not, I would definitely not be surprised if they do reach out to you this month uh, because it's very activated here. There is a definite desire of wanting to manifest you. Like I said, for some of you guys, it could just be them trying to manifest you through manifestation, um, through prayer through, you know, talking to God, give me a second opportunity. I promise I will do good by them. Um, and that's the good side. Uh, but with the star card and the magician and the hermit could also represent seeking uh, higher knowledge or uh, seeking professional help to actually make that happen. So be aware of that, Aries. All right, my lovelies. Now let's go to Taurus. Let's see what's going on with Taurus. Give me three cards to represent new love. Three cards to represent Old Flame. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Taurus, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, my lovely Taurus. Let's see what's going on with you guys. We have the Three of Cups, the Four of Cups, and the Two of Swords. Wow. All right, so in regards to new love, in regards to how they see you, Three of Cups, I feel like it started off as a challenge for them, maybe. In regards to how they feel about you, Four of Cups, there's definitely no emotions here. Um, if you feel like there is a hot and cold to this connection, meaning that they reach out and they're blowing up your phone all day, and then the next day you don't hear from them at all. They're just plain mind games. And the reason for this is because to them, it's more about the chase. It's more about the challenge, right? And the moment they feel that you are becoming used to them or the moment that they feel like you're getting closer to them, that's when they completely shut down or when they pull away. And the reason for this is because that's what keeps you taking the bait. That's what keeps you more entertained or more interesting. The feeling of uh, going up and down a roller coaster of emotions is what creates, unfortunately, a stronger bond. Um, so my advice is if you feel like you've been dealing with this type of energy where they're hot and cold, where they communicate, then they don't. And then they come back around and they tell you, yes, I care for you, da, 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 da. Don't fall for it, Taurus. Walk away from this. You need to protect yourself. And at this point, what Spirit is saying is that you need to be more wiser in regards to who you open your heart to. Um, because I feel like for some of you guys, you've either been dealing with this, not just in romance, but in every aspect of your life where people are really showing you who they truly are and you need to take it for what it is. And make decisions about who you allow in your heart and who you don't. So that you can prevent from being hurt. Okay? Now, in regards to your past, in regards to the old flame, we have the six of swords. We have the king of pentacles and the strength card. I don't see communication for you guys. Um, when we're talking about how they feel about you, six of swords indicates that this person has already moved on. Um, and they've moved on with the king of pentacles because they're trying to stabilize elsewhere or because they're trying to bring about more stability in their life. I feel like for some of you guys, you're already aware of this, or you may have recently found out that they were dealing with someone else, um, with the strength card, you know, what they're saying here is basically keep it moving Taurus, um, don't don't sit there and wait for someone to wake up one day and realize what your worth is. 
if the moment they walked away from this relationship, they weren't aware of your worth, at some point the universe will teach them and will reveal to them what they missed out on. But don't give them the possibility of feeling like they could come back into your life and that you would receive them or that you would take them back. With the Six of Swords, they're telling you it's time to move on and to find your own stability and to find your own confidence in yourself and the strength that maybe sometimes you doubt yourself or maybe even think of yourself as a weak person when in reality, the Spirit is telling you you're much more stronger than you give yourself credit for. Um, the simple fact is this. When people get hurt, when they get, you know, when you get hurt, when you're betrayed, you have two options in life. You learn from it, you become more wiser, and you become more protective of your heart, or you become cynical. And when you become cynical, you block yourself for any from any type of blessing. Yes, you won't hurt, but you also won't feel. And sometimes not feeling or sometimes feeling numb is more painful than actually feeling something, even if it leads us to heartbreak. Do you see what I'm saying? Because sometimes heartbreak is a representation of how much you cared and loved for the person. So what they're saying here is you're much more stronger than that because though you've been hurt before in the past or you've been let down, you continuously keep giving, you know, others the opportunity and give yourself the opportunity to connect, even though it means that you may put yourself in a situation that you'll end up getting hurt. So there is courage in that. And what they're telling you here is that it takes strength as well. And the fact that you are willing to continuously do that just speaks about your strength and your courage. All right, my lovelies. All right. And finally, let's see what's going on with my lovely Geminis. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Let's see what's going on with Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus in regards to love. Three cards to represent you love. Three cards to represent old flame. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Gemini, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. All right, here we go. All right, Gemini, you have the High Priestess, the Eight of Pentacles, and the Queen of Pentacles. Wow, okay. So in regards to how they see you, they see you as a very mysterious person. They see you as someone that is not necessarily easy to read. Um... There is a mysterious allure about you that really draws them in. In regards to how they feel about you, Eight of Pentacles, they definitely see you as a worth, um, as a person that's worth putting in the effort in getting to know you. I feel like they're going to be much more proactive this month, even going into August, in spending more quality time with you. Uh, with the Queen of Pentacles, it is, you know, the possibility of stabilizing or becoming something much more stable. Um, the future actions, Queen of Pentacles, is knowing exactly what to do, um, taking action when, it, when it's necessary. So I definitely do see them very enthusiastic about this connection or this relationship. And there is an element, like I said, of enigma. Something about you really attracts them really makes them want to get to know you much better. Um, so if you've been on this journey with them of getting to know each other, the less you say, the better. Because I feel like it's giving you guys the opportunity of really connecting or getting to know each other on a deeper level. And I feel like that deeper level is definitely something that is very important for you and necessary, especially because it's when you have those long conversations on the telephone or when you are having really soulful type of deep connections or having an intellectual conversation that stimulates your mind and that's how Gemini's connect with people um so again I feel like you're you guys are very similar in your intellect you're very almost like 
what you're expecting in a relationship or what you're wanting is exactly what they're wanting. I feel like you guys are really meeting each other halfway. Um, my advice is don't be too flighty though, Gemini. Uh, try to reciprocate the effort that they're putting into this connection. All right. And now when we're talking about the past and your ex-lover, how they feel about you, Seven of Wands, they are definitely on the defensive side. Um, they've pulled away. Death card, obviously, they're into this. In regards to how they feel about you with the death card, it speaks about realizing, but I feel like this has more to do with you, Gemini. You realizing or coming to the understanding that the love that once was there is no longer there. And accepting it. Um, with the future actions, five of pentacles, I feel like, I feel like this cycle is completed for those of you guys that were expecting or wanting to have some type of reconciliation with your partner from the past or the person that you were dealing with in the past. I feel like they have served their purpose at this point in your life. It's time to keep it pushing Gemini and stop allowing people to, Stop allowing people to either depend on you or to expect from you. Um, and the reason I say that with the death card and five of pentacles, I feel like when there is a destabilization of finances or what's going on in their life, uh, they're more prone to reaching out to you, but it has more to do with what you're able to do for them. So again, I think it's time that you fully embrace this ending and pull away from anything that it's kind of the same that I tell my clients. If people are not bringing anything into your life that is positive, then there's no reason they should be in your life. And I don't mean money-wise. I'm talking about in any single aspect. If a person does not inspire you, if a person does not make you laugh, if a person does not bring good experiences into your life and all they do is take from you, then it's time you take your energy and walk the fuck away from them. Because obviously, we don't do takers here. You know, it's a reciprocation type of energy. If you have love for someone, you're going to show it to them. You're going to physically show them in every single aspect that you possibly can that you have love for them. And that is going to be reciprocated. Now, if all they do is take and take and take from you without giving anything in return, then... And when I say anything in return, like I said, the, the example, if they're not bringing laughter into your life, if they're not bringing optimism, uh, you know, uh, positivity, whatever it is, then it's time for you to walk away from that. So stop allowing people to leech off of your energy, Gemini. All right, my lovelies. All right. I hope that you guys enjoyed these readings. Like, share, and comment. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to our channel. You have all of the our links on the description box below. I want to wish you guys the very best. Stay tuned for more videos, and I will see you guys soon. Until then, bye-bye.